Okay, we, we may as well make a start. Um, the rest of our panel may walk through the door in a moment. Um, and if they don't, we have more time. So that's, that's good. Um, so my name is Paul Miller. I'm going to mo be moderating this conversation today where we're going to learn a little about real enterprise experience of really using OpenStack to, to do um, production workloads. Um, one of the things we're keen to do is to get audience participation, to get all of you involved. So if you have questions or comments as we speak, please do um, contribute them and we'll get a, a conversation going and hopefully learn from one another. Um, the other thing I have to say before we start is that Alison at the back, um, taking photographs, um, has said that everyone who is here can have a t-shirt at the end um, to, to reward you for staying and for contri contributing and for sharing your perspectives. If you see Alison at the end, she'll give you a voucher which lets you pick up a t-shirt from the Intel stand. So let's get going. Um, as I said, my name is Paul Miller. I'm going to be moderating the conversation. Um, I have an esteemed and, and rather small at the moment uh, panel, which is going to get bigger in just a moment, I promise. Yes. Uh, so I'll let our existing panelists introduce themselves. First off, Carmen. Good afternoon, my name is Carmine Remy. I'm a director of cloud engineering over at Workday. Uh, Workday is a successful software as a service company focusing on HR and financials and other products uh, over time, uh, including big data. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. So um, my name is Patrick debus pesquet I'm working for Numergy. Numergy is a public cloud company. We started two years ago. Uh, we are fully engaged with OpenStack and I'm gonna tell you what are on the road. Uh, nicely, we say journey, but the journey going to have some rapid, and rapid is something we need to mitigate. So that's the return on experience we're going to share with you, and I hope you're going to have a good time. Thank you. So sticking with you, Patrick, what are you using OpenStack itself to do? So first of all, I mean, when we started two years ago to, to, to build a company, we were thinking about the visions. And when we term, when in, in terms of visions, we were defining, should we have vendor luck, or do we have to think different way? And when you say different way, what kind of decisions regarding the risk we're going to be able, I mean, to assume? So we started to think about OpenStack. It was the early days of OpenStack, but there is some very true experience coming from Rackspace and others. So it was a uh, inspire me somewhere and the team and said, okay, if we go to OpenStack, which release are we gonna start? So we were waiting, I mean, Grizzly first, and we're starting with Grizzly. Right now we are Ice House, very close to, to move to Juno. So Juno will be probably on the early stage of next year. And I have to tell you that we got the breadth of the foundations, means a lot of innovations coming from the innovations from everywhere. And we've seen also during the first year where we decided to go with OpenStack to see the big player are coming in the game. So big player, you know them, because they, they, they give you a lot of t-shirts, caps, and others. But the big players, it's another thing to think about. I mean, is it solid? Yes or no? Can we think about, I mean, an engine who delivers services to company, and those companies could be stock exchange, or it could be uh, very young company which are looking for I mean, services and paying the services only when they use it. And we think that OpenStack was the right way I mean, to go with, uh, to think about the new infrastructure as a service. And, and our platform is commercially available since last in June. Uh, it took for us a year and a half I mean, to design, to prove of concept. And finally, we were going on the road with five partners, which has been scratchify our jobs the design, and they get the confidence in Numergy and the way that we have implemented in Postac. So I will tell you how, when, and what was the, the, the big issues we were fixing, and we have fixed. So just sticking with you for a moment, now you were essentially building a new company, yeah. um, trusting OpenStack. Now, OpenStack Grizzly wasn't the most dependable piece of software to to launch a new company on. So that was quite a, a leap of faith. Yeah, you say in English, mitigate. I like this word because we don't have the equivalent in French. 
So mitigate means that you are taking risk and you are looking for the value. I would say we find the value, but also we find some other things that company are dealing with for many years. Should I have to buy or should I have to make? Mm. And that's a big, big, big concern as a CTO when you are bowing to the, to the team and talking to the shareholders, then I have to have their confidence. They know that they are looking for cost, means that license or software is not an issue, it's an option. And we were, let's say, commit to say, with good engineers, with good schools, engineer schools, you can get the best of breed, but also you have to think about release management. Because this market, it's uh, not only skills, but as soon as you develop the skills, competitors are looking for you. Not only to use the platforms, but use the skills you develop with. So the risk, it's financial, it's about skills, and it's about partners, good partners to deal with. And for France, OpenStack two years ago was an interesting journey again, because only one company was obviously satisfied to talk about OpenStack, and the rest of the, the market was much more, I mean, 2PC talking with OpenStack. So when you said, I'm gonna sell to EDF, as we did with a good partner, and I'm gonna tell probably some words about HP, because we were working with them and designed the cloud OS on the, on the early stage, and the French company, as Numergy is, bring the inspiration to a very large company and said, okay, if you want to operate this way, you're gonna go directly to the wall. So it was the right combination between a big player, small player, bring the energy, bring the visions, and finally, how we want to operate for customers infrastructures as a service as a public cloud. So that was the big questions we fixed. I think it's solved for the time being, but the next release and after release, it's always another game. And that's where the topic is about release management because release management from OpenStack is quite an interesting one. But when you talk to very large company, I mean, they are doing release management every six years. And we get every six months. Which so is a, a how we fill yeah. the gap. Yeah, and that's the topic we want to dig into a little uh, in a moment. Workday, what are you doing with OpenStack at sure. the moment? Um, at Workday with, uh, with OpenStack, uh, we have, uh, we've had an integration pass for quite some time. We allow our customers to submit workloads, Java workloads that we run in our cloud. And uh, that was one of the very first workloads that we've used to migrate over to OpenStack, leveraging the existing sort of uh, virtualization technology that's already there. Uh, we're also looking at the whole breadth of our <coughs> workloads at Workday. And you know, in the fullness of time, the hope would be that we use OpenStack to run the entire data center using a combination of ironic, uh, combination of KVM, and then also containers. So each, each of those models where and when appropriate. So, I mean, for, for both of you, uh, you were taking a, a risk of, of one form or another in, in moving to OpenStack. What was the evaluation process you went through in comparing it to some of the other ways you could have solved the same problem? And I'll start sure, with you. Sure. Uh, so at Workday, um, we are uh, a couple of different things, actually. It started even with evaluating operating systems, uh, Ubuntu versus CentOS. Uh, we looked at different uh, network options, different storage options, and um, and each of these major pieces within uh, OpenStack, even compute, we're looking at uh, containers versus KVM. For us, um, the two, maybe three fundamental things are, you know, does it work? Which isn't always the case. Um, does it perform? And, you know, how secure is it? And, uh, you know, obviously you get, you know, have engineering teams, smart people, dive into uh, those issues and uh, tear it apart, put it back together and come to uh, a decision, you know, converge on what works best and then move forward with that technology. That's kind of what we did at Workday. Yeah, as a public uh, cloud service provider, I mean, the, the two big issue was, should we have to virtualize, that's okay. Everything is agreed on that. But what kind of virtualizations? And as Carmen said, what kind of kernel I should deal with? There is a lot of option there. So 
you can decide to build your team, which are contributing to the Linux foundations. That's one option. <coughs> the other one is looking for what is available on the market. So you should talk to your engineer teams and, and they have multiple ways and multiple feelings to say, that's a good one. That's a really, really, really best one. And at the end, when you're looking for, you think about what kind of supports I need. So that's exactly what Carmen said in a very political way. <laughs> nice. <laughs> the other things where we were very, very sensitive was the networks. Because if you say that my revenue coming from the public cloud, you should have a network. With no networks, you have a very nice platform, but nobody cares about it because nobody can use it. Uh, we were adding another point at Numergy because we love things which are complex but under control. We, were, we are selling to partners. We don't talk directly to customers. Of course, we are going visiting customers with the partners, but we don't sell directly. We don't have any shops on the internet, only for the very small and limited VM. So is it OpenStack or not? It's a bad cost. So choosing key VM and which key VM is the best one. And when you think the best one, it, is it my choice or the company which I'm targeting as a customer will tell me what is the right choice. So bundle the kernel itself and the network piece because probably everybody knows then the first network model belonged to the OpenStack. Folsom, Grizzly, it was un unpredictable in terms of stability. And I'm very, let's say, clever when I say that to you. Everybody are thinking about the network piece. It's extremely important for a cloud service provider as we are Giving the, the, the network access, it's key because it's about revenue for us. It's about us also customer experience and it's about flexibility. So we were very committed to say network will be happen at Numergy only if it's virtualized. So we were picking up on the early day SDN. And we have implemented SDN with the weakest piece of Neutron or Quantum, depends on your flavors. And networks has been really implemented by Numergy, so we are using SDN from Nuage, Nuage Network, because we were directly linked with the labs. We're getting the very, very late, fresh driver, and we were operating also a canonical kernel. So those three elements bring support. Even the support, it's quite difficult to explain when you get an issue because everybody is looking for what I did there, uh, what kind of documentation is available, et cetera, et cetera, because you are running fast. You should focus on the business and also you should focus on what should be controlled. And that's the numbers of conversation I got with my colleague is there. It's about productions, because it's nice to design to deliver, but at the end it should be operational control. So that's the main piece we were focused before to say, okay, OpenStack is the royal road <coughs> for us because we believe that with OpenStack we can run multiple instances, we can have multiple hypervisors, and in Numergy we said we want to produce the digital energy for today and tomorrow. Means that the engine has to be very solid, very reliable, and significant also in terms of saving a cost for customers. Did you look at things like um, Open Nebula, which was perhaps bigger for, for U the European part of the audience? They may be more familiar with it than, than the North Americans. Well, I will talk only for my name. I've been working 25 years for independent software vendors. So I was much more copyright oriented. And I can share with you the big difference I live since I joined Emerging. Open source is just incredible. But what kind of workload the customer is waiting for? And that's my experience. So it's about knowledge, under control knowledge, and 
picking up what should be done to deliver the best service. So think simple, which is not the right way to think open source, because you have so many options to code. So adopting for us, I mean, agility in a way that we are producing a lot of new features, or we try to, that's also something we want to manage as a cloud service provider, because you know that we are compared with a very large logo in US one, which has billion investment per year. So we are not poor, it's about million, but those million has to be revenue somewhere. So working with open source, I think it was refreshing what I learned during the last 25 years. I know that everything is possible, but at the end, I mean, it is possible for the right go-to markets. And also, if you don't think the complexity you are not able to fix tomorrow, you're gonna get to fix it tomorrow, after tomorrow. And as soon as you launch the service and customers are rely on the SLA, you should be very serious about that. So what about you in, t in terms of the, the other options you looked at before settling sure. on OpenStack? Um, so we had, uh, before settling on OpenStack, we had our own inbuilt uh, in-house technology. But uh, also, when I joined, uh, we looked at Eucalyptus and uh, CloudStack. And initially, just started with a paper valuation, setting up a, you know, some criteria that we thought was important to us. Of course, momentum and openness and those kinds of things were a big part of that. Uh, the architectural quality as well and, and the direction was uh, very important to us. And so after that uh, paper evaluation, we did do sort of, sort of hands-on, you know, hey, how does this actually work in, in the wild? And we did that with uh, CloudStack and OpenStack. And at that time, and this was back in the Grizzly timeframe, <coughs> and or just before that, uh, we were just a lot more comfortable. So CloudStack won. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Uh, and I'm just here to convince you guys all to switch. Um, but no, OpenStack uh, won, and, 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 you know, obviously we've been... Uh, both pleasantly surprised with the continued momentum, but also, as Patrick mentioned, you know, it's, it's a, it is sort of a journey to get to the point where you're ready to put production workloads on top of this. And uh, the open source aspect of it, but beyond that, even the open community, really important for us. And, uh, you know, from the storage, you know, we're using Ceph. On the networking side, we're using Contrail. <coughs> and all of these things are, uh, have come together for us, I think, quite, quite well. Good, thank you. And if anyone in the room does have questions, please do um, wave your hand. If I can see you through the, the glare of the spotlight, I will draw you into the conversation. And wh while we're going on, one of the things that you know, a lot of enterprise clients especially are, are talking about and grappling with is this question of whether they take OpenStack from Trunk or one of the distributions or a distribution and support. What did you two decide sure, to do? Sure. Well, for us, uh, we're you know, using the, the packages from uh, RDO, but it's pretty much our own, um, what we've put together uh, using our own sort of chef cookbooks. And we've invested a lot of time in our continuous integration, continuous deployment technology, uh, so that we know that as we take up uh, new uh, elements, whether it's from uh, the open source community or from our own contributions, we're able to test this in a way that we have a high degree of confidence that we can push it out there. Uh, similarly, I'll add that uh, within our data centers, uh, leveraging uh, availability zones quite heavily so that our application developers and our platform teams that work on top of OpenStack are able to take advantage of the availability zone uh, paradigm so that if we screw up and take a availability zone down, which is going to happen, uh, that their service doesn't go down and they don't suffer sort of an, an outage. So for us, <coughs> again, I'm, I'm I will insist because we are a service cloud provider operate only in public, through partners. Security is always the first topic to cover with any partners or, or, or customers. You know that Numergy is born from a public initiative, it's called Andromed. It was about three years ago. And the idea for the French government to say to the market then, we need some actors, we need some data centers in France, we need to protect data because some could be export, but some are not able to be export for many reasons. I'm not here to explain why they are okay or not, but that's a concern, that's regulations. So we should assure to our partners that we are very serious about security. So we build the security operation centers to protect the data centers, but the platform also. Uh, everything has been encrypted. Everything should be v VPN, 
everything should be load balancers. So that's a very, very classic concern for any type of customers. But the first topic we should prove, and that's why we were running this year, I mean, the certifications to get the 2701, but also the CSR stars. That's another way to say what I said, it is writing, it could be checked. So security, it's a big, big issue when you are public platforms, and especially if you display on the flag that this is open source. Because for a lot of uh, security officers, open source means backdoor. They have the same feeling about them in the copyright, but they have to accept it because they cannot control. So at the end, I mean, security, is it a concern? Of course, it's about confidence. It's about confidence you bring to customers, but you bring also to partners. It's that, that's another way, I mean, to be compared regarding the other players on the market. And I think Nemergy did a very good job in terms of security. Uh, we continue to invest in security, and the French security offices are checking our infrastructures, not to check if we get back doors, but if we are very serious in terms of security vision, approach, process, techniques, software, equipment, data centers. All those layers have been scrutinized, and right now we are very, let's say, secure, but as soon as you say we're secure, I mean, you are tired a lot of people which are looking for, is it true, yes or no? It's a challenge, isn't it? <laughs> so it keeps you alive every day. And he, sometimes you will stop to sleep at night also. So for That's both, cool. yeah, yes. So for both of you, then you're you're saying that you wanted to retain the control and the knowledge over the code that meant you wanted to do it yourself rather than taking a distribution where someone else had, uh, had taken some no, of those steps. No, we were contributing to Solum. We were on the top one uh, just before Rackspace. So you know that Rackspace has built OpenStack. So as a very small company born in Europe, we are very proud about that. But Solum, I was was heavy attractions made some months ago and, and is moving. So I would say OpenStack or open source is every work in ways. That's you too selling that. It's changing very, very often. And as a CTO, when you said I'm looking for, for the next three years, you should keep up the ship where it should be with the right cap. And that's, that's something you need to mitigate every day with your teams, with the providers, and also about what you learn, because on the journey we learn a lot of things. So we know that because you are more and more popular, I mean, the, the attacks is coming from very often. I can share with you that we are storing four billion messages per day, only for the security, the good things. We're gonna do big data on that, and we're gonna sell services about security. So that's another way to learn on the journey that things you are investing could generate return on investment, but you should be patient, and, and the board of directors should accept also. That's another part of the job. Yes. Sure. Um, so at, at Workday, uh, probably very uh, similar in terms of having, probably not necessarily control over what's going in there, but uh, you know we have a lot of best practices and a lot of existing technology at Workday in terms of how we manage our data centers presently. And so a lot of this work is integrating OpenStack with those existing things, whether it's telemetry or logging or uh, security appliances, uh, you name it, there's a lot of stuff already in place. And so there was imperative that we integrate this technology with those existing, um, that existing technology. Um, but also, you know, to operate this, uh, you need to have a high degree of familiarity with what's happening underneath the covers. Uh, we don't allow anybody outside of the company, inside of our data centers. And so if something breaks, uh, we've got to be able to fix it. And so that uh, traditional path of ramping up on the technology and figuring out how it breaks and how to tear it apart was a critical element in the maturation process for us. So for both of you, that path creates an immediate challenge, which is skills. Mm. Where did you get them from? Did you train up existing staff or hire new staff? Uh, so this is a brand new team at, uh, at Workday. Uh, we did leverage some of the existing in-house expertise where we're applicable, but uh, just hiring uh, new employees and investing in uh, the new employees, you know, making sure they're, as you'd expect, you know, smart, high bandwidth, uh, can learn technology quickly, are comfortable and flexible with, uh, with requirements that might be vague, and uh, able to learn uh, with these, uh, learning these new technologies, uh, able to contribute, maybe not right out of the bat, but within a short period of time. 
So what do you hire? Do you hire an OpenStack engineer or do you hire someone who understands a set of technologies? Uh, our focus has been um, on software engineers and software engineering, people with computer science degrees. Uh, we have a lot of you know, sysadmins and people familiar with uh, IT infrastructure already at the company and, and then bringing on uh, software engineers with that sort of sysadmin bent um, was the path we chose. Patrick? Well, we were following two roads. <coughs> First, because we started the company, so we were looking for to hire people. As I said, I mean, uh, the availability were very rare in terms of uh, real OpenStack experience. We found some people which has been experienced OpenStack between two PCs with an Ethernet. That's okay. That's a proof of concept for yourself when you're at home and you are thinking that you could do something interesting at home. But it was not at the right level, I mean, what we were looking for. So. Uh, we were forced to looking for uh, people then we're going to train. Uh, and I was loving this period because we were picking up some doctors coming from, uh, uh, when I say doctors, with respect. Because they have a very large brain and they can read, learn, and express, and, and, and train. So Did I you was, hear that, Ben? I, wa I was following I mean, what I learned when I was in US. I mean, train a trainer. That's one way. Uh, it was enough, I mean, to build a, an architect team about seven people, but you have to find a very senior one, which has not a dreamer. It's over. He will continue to dream, but he's dreaming to build a team much more than getting more value on the market. So that was one part of the blending we were thinking about and we were doing. But the other ways uh, we were working were we were deciding to talk with some uh, school engineers or engineer schools, uh, especially the, the for the, the last four years, so before they get the, the degrees or the certifications. So we were building with the team, I mean, the uh, cloud certifications for some from some specific schools. We have around Paris, uh, two of them. And the goal, the target for us, I mean, to get those engineers because we were sharing the project, uh, we were training them about cloud, not only spe especially OpenStack. And that's another way to getting the best of breed in terms of new engineers because they are they're still dreamer. And I'm, I'm going to be a dreamer again. But also, I can tell you to manage those people, you should to relearn. All the time what you learn, what you think it is true, because the right way to manage those new energy, it's a big gap for company. So you should accept that they are coming from with skateboard. You should accept that they have doing some flashball. Uh, I'd say no debt behind that. But sometimes, I mean, during the day, I mean, they can get up and say, okay, we're gonna play for 10 minutes or 20 minutes. So the breadth for those time of team is very different and you should adapt what the board is thinking about it and the right way, I mean, to put a new atmosphere where you get the best of the innovations. So when you are senior as I am, that's a new lesson and I, but I like to learn and it was a very, very good pleasure, I mean, to, to work this way. So we blended some seniors, some doctors, some brand new engineers which are not be yet certified, but many of them has been joined Numergy. That's another way to get your people very loyal. And that's something we need to build as a culture because everybody is thinking about Silicon Valley, but you can do that, I mean, around Paris. And that's a very good, good experience, return, on, return experience. I'd add to what Patrick mentioned, uh, with interns, uh, at least that's what we call them in the US, and new college grads, we've had a lot of success um, identifying them from some of the top schools, bringing them on, and uh, that has a snowball effect as you bring these uh, students on. Um, you're able, then they go back to the university, you get additional candidates coming at the next opportunities, and that's been a tremendous experience for us. Hi, yeah. Um, we are a startup in Switzerland. Um, we're going to be providing public cloud as well. We went live beginning in November. Um, and we're looking to make our cloud GXP compliant. And I was wondering if either of you have done that and how difficult it was to get there. I'm laughing, but it's serious. <laughs> <laughs> not, not for us. No. 
Uh, which part of Switzerland you are? Uh, we are in Basel. Okay, so I'm currently talking with somebody who's in Zurich. Okay. But it was not for the same subject. <laughs> you just want to get our, our OpenStack platform, so. Oh no, we've already built ours, it's okay, we're done. <laughs> no, but we didn't, we didn't get uh, to this level. Probably we, we need uh, one part of, uh, let's say, the radar. We want to be certified, or we want to certify for France the OpenStack with a classroom, with a very high skills to get this, these certifications, as a big player did for many years. I mean, I think about Cisco and others. And that's another way, I mean, to bring the people and getting, I mean, the confidence from them. So we are thinking seriously about that. And, and, and that's something we, from the market perspective. I mean, if you want to see switch, the big bank insurance, retail and others, they have to think that the, the training course, the certification and the platform and the player are available. Because they want all in one answers. Yeah. And that's somewhere the follow the strategy following for us or the follow strategy sorry for my english that's okay yeah, it just uh, it hasn't been a focus for us so. no okay is it something you feel you have to have oh definitely i mean in switzerland it's pharmaceutical companies and they're not going to come in our cloud if it's not gxp compliant we've got all the training that's all sorted um we're moving on weight we've got eyes on 9001 sorted we're going for 27000 that's almost there um, GXP hopefully next year, but I was just wondering if anybody's already done it because there's not a lot of people who have um, and so it's a little bit of a blind alley We're sort of crawling along in the dark and you know, I was looking so for a when you've bit done insight. it come to Vancouver and tell the audience right. about it <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully Yeah, I, I had a question um, uh, something of course uh, popped in my hair when you, you said the uh, cookbooks and some two questions for both of you um, but the cookbook one first uh, um, you hopefully realize there are OpenStack cookbooks out there in the community and stack boards, right, that are now maturing. Yes. Yes. Um, I'm one of the cores, so I have, to, I have to nibble on that one a bit. Have you ever tried to contribute back to it, and who, who, who might be doing that? And then just in general, um, you've, you've taken OpenStack. I'm kind of curious what type of, what type of um, parts have you done for giving back to the community? I'm just kind of curious how that's scaled in, in both your uh, companies. Sure. Thanks. Uh, I can start with that. Um, we started with the Rackspace cookbooks, uh, where that's what our earlier clouds were, were based on. Um, we, we did go down a different path in, in some of our production deployments. Uh, we do have an initiative right now to use uh, the StackForge uh, cookbooks. And I believe we've made some contributions back already, but uh, we're just at the early stages of that. And uh, our future production clouds are most likely based on StackForge. Uh, I am curious to, and to see whether or not any work is being done to do Stack Forge with Triple O, um, just because of my own belief. You know, you got Triple O, data center scale, installation, and upgrades. Somehow that should, you know, all roads should go through that someday. But you as I said, okay, yeah. Yeah, perfect, perfect. Um, I think I answered the question. So we are, as I said, I mean, we were contributing to Solum. In terms of cookbook, I'm. I'm quite jeopardized because when I was talking with my people a year ago, a year and a half ago, everybody said puppet. Six months later, they said chef. And right now, they said Ansible. <laughs> so, sorry to share with you one secret. I got a musician, so that's the only way to writing music. So I like to change technology, but at the end, I think about three years. If I change all the time, I mean, what I add in is complexity for my, my colleagues who are working in productions. And that's my big concern. So I don't care about Ansible or Puppet or Chef. I know that we need it. As soon as we, we, we have to contribute or to reverse what we develop. But what I, what I did in terms of internal uh, rules, every of people on my team can contribute but they have to contribute in the name of numeracy. And that's something you need to balance. Because people are dreaming about themselves, which is cool. But did they have to do things that the company is looking for to develop? Yes or no. So I put it some rules I learned in my copyright word. I said, you contribute in the name of numeracy, 
means that you have ethics, right way to document, and also that's another way to say that Numergy is an innovative company energized by the good, good engineers, but this is not an individual contribution. So, but Puppet, Chef, I don't know, and I'm waiting the next one. And, and, and it's confused somewhere. What is the best for the next three years? That's a big question you have to ask. So when you are swimming in the swimming pool of open source for years, I mean, you don't see any issues, but what I see, if I'm thinking in the next two years, I have to keep up the code which has been developed 10 years. Is it something you think about it when you are doing? So this, I mean, this raises a broader point that we wanted to touch upon. We only have a, a few minutes left, but you talked about the move from Puppet to Chef to Ansible, and also at the beginning mentioned you know, the, the issue with OpenStack release cycles. They're, they're rapid. Every six months, something new arrives, yeah. which is okay perhaps for a developer. It's okay perhaps for dev and test. Yes. It raises issues for both of you in terms of running a mission-critical, dependable product. Definitely. Definitely. I have no words, I mean, to say it. It's interesting for the test and dev, for sure. Uh, but how many companies as developers in-house to develop their own applications, because most of them have been moving in offshore? It seems that the developer um, is now coming back on top of the concern, but we have to help them, I mean, to pick up the right tools for the next five years. And, and the next five years, with every six months a new release, it's a very difficult forecast. So you should be in. That's why Numergy is one of the contributors and we pay to be part of. Uh, I put my, my engineers or the team on the key critical component we need to operate the platforms. So security, network, storage, and of course uh, CPU or calculation, NOVA. And also the storage, it's, it's a one piece with driving you to the big data area space. That's also a big concern. You need to balance what kind of technology, not only for the time being, but if I have to move, I mean, 10 or 20 peta, what time I need to move from one way to another one, which is the same data as, which, which have to have, I mean, the recycle, I mean, in order, I mean, to put it in the new web because you want to extract the value of. So that's a concern you have to have to fix in terms of a CTO, because your role is to define what should be done, how we can do that, with which, which, which budget, and at the end for which customers. And I'm starting always by customers. I don't know what the customer want to do with big data, but I know that, that they want it. That's, that's a common response, I think. Everyone wants big data, but they're not totally sure what they want to do with it. Come. The, the six month release cycle doesn't um, bother us as much. We have, our current strategy is you know, probably six months behind the latest release. You know, once it's been vetted and had a dot two, dot three sort of upgrade and bug fixes and things along those lines. And then we'll let it incubate through our continuous integration process and then go from there. Okay. Yeah. Good, thank you. So we are, I'm afraid, out of time. Um, I would like to thank my, my reduced panel. I thought they did very well talking for what they thought, they thought they would have half the time to speak that they actually had, so they've, they've filled the space nicely. Thank you to all of you for your attention and for your questions. I hope this was useful to, to you. And Alison will give you vouchers for T-shirts if you want them on, on the way out of the door. So thank you all very much for your attention.